Hello friends, welcome back. This is Rupesh and you're watching CPPNuts video series on C++ and today's topic is Hybrid Inheritance in C++. So before this video, I have introduction part of inheritance, why you should use inheritance in first place and single inheritance, multi-level, multiple, hierarchical examples. So if you have not watched all those videos, please go ahead and watch them so that you will be able to understand this little better. Because this inheritance is the combination of multiple and hierarchical inheritance. So you must be knowing what is multiple inheritance and hierarchical inheritance in order to understand this topic. Actually, it is not that big. If you don't want to go there and watch them, I can explain these two here as well. So let's give the pictorial representation of multiple inheritance. So multiple inheritance will look like this. Oh, this is looking like some face here. But no, this is multiple inheritance. So this is derived class and this is, let's make it base one and base two. So two base classes are derived into one derived class. And this is the example of multiple inheritance. Not only two, you can have more than two classes. So this is the simplest example of multiple inheritance. And let's go for the hierarchical. And the hierarchical is actually the reverse of this one. So that would look something like this. We have base and we are deriving into D1 and another one is D2. So you can see that it's just the reverse. And by combining these two with each other, we'll get hybrid inheritance. That's why it's called hybrid. You know the meaning of hybrid word, right? Combination of more than two or two is called hybrid. So we will add more than one inheritance type and we'll call it hybrid. And I have taken these examples like student, boy, girl, male and female. Actually, it took a little while to find out the example because it wasn't easy. I'm telling you. So let's draw the diagram between these classes. So I'll just remove all these diagrams from here. And for reference, let's make them somewhere here for shorter introduction. So this is your multiple inheritance and the reverse of that would be hierarchical inheritance. Okay, so this is multiple, this is hierarchical. And we will create hybrid out of these. So you might have guessed it. Let's draw that. Student is a class and boy and girl will be the student, obviously. So let's make them boy and girl. They both are student. But boy is a male so there is this another relation here male and this girl is female okay so this is the diagram now if you look closely it is combination of these two and to show you that let me give you this example here so this is looking like multiple inheritance see two different classes are inherited into single class. So here also student and female is inherited into girl. So this is the example of multiple inheritance. And similarly, if you will see male student and boy case, then also it is multiple inheritance because boy is inheriting more than two classes. And if you will see this one, can you find it here? Yeah, I can see that you have found it. So let me draw that for you. So if you will, have this one then it is hierarchical inheritance different different classes are inheriting the same base class okay so this is hierarchical and this is how it look like so we have seen the example of hybrid inheritance and it really took some time to find this example for you but you know what you can make a statement that it is not necessary that girl is student and boy is student it is obvious that girl is a female but this case is not a necessary case because there are so many boys and girls, they don't study, right? So nothing is perfect in this world. You can mold one type to another type very easily. I mean, uh, what to say here? See, you can make this female also a male. So if there is some girl, she so can go for transplantation and become a male and male can become a female. So in that case, everything will be a wrong example here then. 
but those cases are special cases and we won't consider them and my goal was to explain you this and i think we have achieved that so let's see how we will do this inheritance in programming so let's do that so boy is a student so public student and for before that you must have this semicolon and similar thing for girl also so we'll do the same thing here and let's take this male and female on top of it so that it won't tell you that I'm not able to find this and that and yeah boy is student as well as male and girl is student and female so this is how it should look like so boy is student and male girl is student and female that's it so this is what it shows here this is the actual relationship inheritance relationship now it's up to you what you want to include in student class male class female class and all that and just to give you the example student generally studies so we'll have a function studying there could be a message like i am studying don't disturb so boy is student and girl is student so we can call this particular function from boy and girl but before that let's make this public otherwise we won't be able to call this one so we will create a boy and give some name i'll give ram so ram dot studying if you will call this and let's compile see it is telling that i am studying so student property have come into boy similarly it will come for a girl also so if you will do something like this ram and girl could be sita so much into ramayan today i don't know but it's good to have some example which you can relate okay so see i am studying i am studying so this sita no 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 sita should be girl i am so sorry for that okay so if you will compile this sita is a girl and she is also studying and ram is a boy and ram is also studying so they both are studying don't disturb them and the motive of this function call example was to show you that if there is some property of student and you inherit that class into your own class then that property would come inside your class also but there is one more thing it depends what is the mode of inheritance and the actual property access specifier so if this property is private let's do that i won't go into much detail because i have explained this in my previous videos in full detail so it will be not good for my viewers to watch that again and again so i won't give you a full detail but one small example so if i'll compile this now it will give you the error it is telling that studying is declared private so you cannot call that okay so there are situation when you want to keep some function up to your class only you don't want them to be inherited or to be accessible in derived class then you make them private okay so this private protected and public and here also you can have private protected and public and i have given almost all the combinations example in my previous videos so if you are looking for something like that please go ahead and watch the introduction part of the inheritance which is the first video of this series called inheritance in c++ you will get the link in the description field for full playlist so watch the first video of that playlist if you're not sure what is this public private protected means in these two places so i'll keep this video this much only and if you have any further doubt please ask consider me as your virtual teacher i may take time to answer your question because maybe i am sleeping when you are posting the comment but you must expect the answer when you comment okay so it is like i will always be there don't worry about that so if you like the video don't forget to hit the like button dude and make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you will get the notification for my upcoming videos like this right now i am posting videos for c++ basic tutorial where i'll be covering very basic stuffs in c++ and i have interview questions series so that if you're looking for job you can go ahead and watch that playlist and i have c++ and c mcq questions also which will fine tune your small small doubts 
and later I'm planning to go for C++ 11, 14, 17 and latest 20. So in future you can expect to get all these topics but for now I'm uploading for C++ basics tutorial. So as I said don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you are interested in all these kind of contents. I'll see you in the next videos. Bye bye.